Hey everyone, this is Brian Marino with Apex Software. And in this video, I wanted to go over getting started using the Photometrics module in Apex Sketch version 7. Before I get started, if anyone has any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section below. Also, if you know anyone who would be interested in this, feel free to like, share, and or subscribe so you don't miss out on any updates. But with all that out of the way, Let's get into sketching using Photometrics. So what you're looking at on the screen here, I have a blueprint pulled up that I need to recreate in Apex Sketch version 7. And if you look at this blueprint, it has all the dimensions for pretty much every wall in here. So what we're going to do, I'm going to use this 15 foot label here to set my scale in Apex and then I'm going to trace it. A couple of things to point out, the 15 foot uh, label I'm using here, or the dimension, it actually goes to the interior studs, I believe, so it's not going to the outside of the wall. So when I do trace this image, I'm tracing like I would in the field, how I would, how I would measure in the field. So in the field, I would measure outside to outside. So I'm going to draw outside to outside so that wall actually won't be 15 feet. It'll be a little bit bigger when I do trace it because it's not taking into account the wall thickness of the exterior materials. So we'll go ahead and close this out. And in Apex 7, I'm going to come up to the Photometrics tab. If you happen to click on your Photometrics tab and you get a message saying you don't have a module available or it's not activated, go ahead and activate it in that window. Otherwise, give us a call if you have questions or problems getting this set up and we can work with you on getting it activated in your version 7. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Load Image icon and it's gonna open a file explorer. And in this case, I'm already pointed to the location of the file that I wanna use. So go ahead and find that file, select it. The file types we support, JPEG, PNG, multiple different PDFs. Um, you can try the different file formats you have. Another thing I like to do, if it's like a PDF, sometimes I'll just screenshot the PDF and then paste it into the background of Apex 7. You can do that as well. There's no right or wrong way to do it, whichever way works best for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and click open. And as you can tell, it went ahead and imported that image. Now it's way too big. It's bigger than what we want. So if I roll the wheel on my mouse, I can kind of zoom in and out on it. And I'm going to switch to my pointer arrow and I can also click and drag and kind of pan around on the screen and see what I have. So in this instance, we want to set our scale here where this 15 foot line is. So I'm going to kind of zoom in on that point so it'll be a little bit easier to trace. So to go over what the buttons at the top here do, once you import an image and there is an image, all these buttons will become active. If there's no image imported, all these icons will kind of be grayed out and the only one available will be the load image icon. But since I have an image loaded, Show image, hide image basically does what it says. If you want to hide the image, you can go to hide. If you want to show it, you can go to show. And that'll kind of toggle it on or off. Remove image will delete the image from the background. Set scale is what we will use to set our scale when we're ready to do that. Image smaller or image larger will make the image get smaller or larger depending on what you click on. I wouldn't use that once you set your scale because that's going to throw your scale off. So only use that if your scale isn't set yet. Rotate left, right, same thing. That'll rotate the image left or right. So if you need to rotate your image for for whatever reason you can do that again i don't use these much because once i set my scale i don't really mess with anything up here edit mode allows you to edit the image to like set your scale or change your scale and things like that Orient Guide will allow you to trace a line and then make it vertical or horizontal on the screen. That's what these options are here. So say your image was skewed, it wasn't straight on the page, you can actually come in and adjust it using that. And then to the right here, Intensity, this makes the image darker or lighter depending on the direction you pull it and where you put it. So if your image is super dark and you want to lighten it up so you can see a little bit better what you're doing, go ahead and slide that slider. I won't get into the geo stuff today. That just basically allows you to geo reference your images. But again, we won't get into that today. So right now we need to set our scale. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to set scale. And when I click on set scale, you'll notice I get a cross here just like I'm drawing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just gonna get my, my uh, cursor aligned with the line here and then I'm gonna start tapping my left arrow and move down it. Okay, and you'll notice I go too far here. It doesn't line up. If you hold shift, and tap the direction, it'll start moving a tenth at a time. So that's kind of how you can get, fine tune it once you get close, hold shift and start tapping direction arrows and it'll start aligning. I'm gonna go ahead and tap enter and then hold the right arrow and trace across. And once I get here, I need to go a little further. So I'm gonna hold shift until I get it aligned. 
and then I'll go ahead and tap enter and now I get a prompt showing me okay right now at the current scale it's at this is 51.3 feet it should actually be 15 feet so I'm gonna change it to 15 and then I'm gonna click OK now you'll notice this number up here changed to 15 in purple so that's telling me now my scale is set from here to here is 15 feet in apex so as long as this image is to scale now whatever I trace should be correct so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my pointer click and drag and I'm gonna start from this top left corner and let me kinda of zoom out so you can see where I'm starting from so I'm gonna start from this top left corner and I'm gonna go all the way around the building and I'm just gonna trace the footprint at first once I get the footprint drawn then I'll come back and add the porches and patios and garage to it so I'll zoom back in at my starting point here go ahead and click draw area and align my cursor so I got it close now I'm gonna hold shift and that looks good to me so I'm gonna tap enter and I actually I wanna uh, lighten this a little so I'm gonna drag this about right there I don't I want it fairly light so that I can see clearly what I'm doing alright so now that I'm aligned I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing so I'm just gonna hold the right arrow alright and you'll notice I go too far here so I just go past hold shift and come back to the left until I'm aligned and then I'll tap enter then I'll come down tap enter we'll come over too far so we'll do shift direction enter and then we'll go up we're too far so I'll come down and hold shift up enter we'll go over enter at this point I know I want to come down and align with the other 2.3 so I'll just hold control and press my down arrow and then press enter and then we'll come over to the right get that close tap enter and then for this angle I'll go up and then right up and then right if I go up and right again I'm gonna go too far so I'm gonna hold shift and go up right up right and that looks pretty good to me right there so basically up right up right keeps your rise and run the same and it'll keep it at a 45 which is clearly what this line is so that's a, a tip on tracing angles if it's if it's a 45 you can go up and then over up and then over and as long as you go the same distance up and over it'll keep it at a 45 all right next we'll go to the right and you'll notice it followed me off screen so that's another reason I zoom in I know that when I draw off screen it's gonna follow me so I don't have to really worry about you know not being able to see something once I go to where I need to be it's just gonna keep following me okay for the second side of the bay window I'm just gonna press B on my keyboard for bay window and it mirrored that first angle for me next we'll go right and it looks like we went too far right so I'm gonna hold shift and come back and 0.8 is what I got for that corner there and then we'll come up Okay, so we'll just come up to the top here and we went too far so shift up until we're aligned tap enter and now we're ready to move on We'll come over to the right. Once I get close, hold shift, right arrow. Once I'm in alignment, I'll tap enter, and then I'm going to come down. I kind of pause every time the screen view switches just to kind of see what I have ahead of me. But basically, I know this line goes all the way down to the corner of the garage, so I'll just keep going down. Okay, and once I get here, I'll hold shift and continue down until I'm aligned, and then I'll tap enter. Next, we'll come over to the left enter and then we'll come up and then once I get close shift up tap enter and we'll come over shift back enter and then we'll go up shift enter we'll come over shift enter down we'll go shift back up enter shift back enter and again I'm using up down left right arrows along with shift to trace all of this all right, once we get close shift up enter and we'll go to the left and I know at this point this is my last wall so I'm gonna do shift C and we can kind of see where we're at and where we started. So I'm going to hit delete and it's 14.5 to square it up. So I'm just going to tap X on my keyboard to draw that 14.5. And then it's 36.1 all the way up to close it. So I'm just going to tap A on my keyboard to auto close it. And it'll close the shape and it'll pick up my pen. 
Okay, so as you can see, we got the whole footprint of this building traced. So the, the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add this garage in next. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna kinda zoom in on it. I'm gonna roll the wheel on my mouse. Because this blueprint is using you know wall thicknesses and things like that, I'm not too worried about that. Um, basically, I want my garage to just come straight up and then straight over. And then um, there's also a storage area here in the garage. We could define this as a separate area type. I'm gonna go ahead and just include it in the garage and then I'll put an interior wall and I'll just label that as storage. Again, we'll, we'll just do it that way. But if you want to, you can definitely draw the garage and the storage as two separate area types. I'm just gonna include them both as one. So I wanna start on this corner. So I'm gonna move my cursor close and hit J on the keyboard and it'll jump to the corner. I'm gonna tap enter and then I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna go back down using shift and tap enter. Then I'll come over and I'll shift back until I'm aligned and tap enter. And then I'll come up here, shift back down, enter, enter, shift up, enter. And then I'll just control right arrow, enter. And then I'll hit a second enter and then we'll zoom back out. All right, so you can see we have the garage carved out now. So the next thing we'll add will be this front porch area. So I'm gonna zoom in on it. And I'll start from this corner this time. And I'm gonna come down. So I'll just start tapping the down arrow. I went too far, so I'll shift and go back up and then tap enter. And then we'll go over, come down. And it shows the pillars in the front. I'm not gonna draw around those. I'm just gonna square this off. So I'll go over then up, another enter, and now we have that front porch carved out. Next, we need to carve out this covered porch and the patio. So first I'll get the covered porch. So I can see here, it looks like there's some, uh, maybe some pillars holding up a covered porch roof here. And this is probably the roof line right here. So I'll go down, shift down about, five tenths, hit enter, and I'll just draw a line straight across here. So this bottom portion will be covered, and then we'll come back over and shift direction, and then this top piece will be the patio. So I'll go ahead and draw the patio out, tracing it just like I traced the other lines. All right, and then enter, enter again, and then I'll zoom back out so we can see everything. So we have everything drawn. We have our first floor, our porch, our covered porch patio, and the garage all drawn out. So the next step would be to go ahead and define and identify what these are and get the square footages for them. So I'm gonna come here to the define icon and I'm gonna click inside the first floor first, the living area, to highlight it. And then I'll come over here on the right, select first floor and apply. So the way you draw and the way you define, nothing's changed in that. The only difference is you have an image you're tracing versus you're typing in numbers and things like that. So everything I'm doing here is gonna be just like you're used to doing when you normally draw. Next, we'll go ahead and define the garage. So I'm gonna click inside the garage. I'll scroll down and find garage in my list and I'll apply that. So now our garage is defined. Then we got a porch here. So I'll select the porch, select porch, apply, covered porch, apply that. And then we have a patio here. So I'll select that and apply it. And then let me close the define panel, go back to edit. And now as you can see, all of our areas are defined. So I'm gonna come up to the uh, photo metrics tab here and do hide image. Okay, and now you can see what we have drawn versus what we had for the blueprint. So we got that whole sketch drawn, just tracing the blueprint. And then from this point, if you wanna take that out in the field and confirm your measurements, you can definitely do that. Again, you can be more precise than I was here. I just did this more as an example of how to get started and how to trace it. You might have other methods, like for example, that storage that I included in the garage. You might want to cut that as a whole separate area. That's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. So again, you can be as precise as you want to be with this. Basically, import your image. As long as it's a two scale, you can set your scale trace it and everything should come out correctly. I hope everyone found this helpful. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. If you know anyone who would be interested, feel free to like, share, and or subscribe. Otherwise, I will catch y'all on the next one.